a Swiss water decaf, a bear latte with espresso, mocha, hazelnuts, half and half topped with cinnamon. Cold brew is less acidic. A tan line is an espresso, vanilla, mocha, coconut milk over ice. Or vanilla oat milk latte. Particularities and peculiarities. Food sensitivities. No basil, no citrus, no walnuts. Almonds, yes, but peanuts, no. Local greens and microgreens. Breakfast crepes, both sweet and savory, and ingredients I don't even recognize, like spirulina, hemp seeds, and arrow roots, and ashwagandha. <laughs> We've come a long way from thirsting for water in the desert or complaining about having to collect the manna and telling Moses we need some meat so God sends quail. But we are a foodie culture. And food and drink hold extraordinary fascination for us. A word about this list of drink and food and the context of my sermon today. I've been to the beach this week. My sister and I and our little tribes that have grown large my middle child was two weeks old when we began, and so now at 26, our offspring are from age 23 through 36. So we were at the beach with young adults, some with partners, some with babies in tow, and all of them products of a foodie generation in a foodie culture, and I have learned a thing or two this week immersed in the passions about food and drink, and keenly attentive young adults, with an overlay of pondering in my own mind the scripture reading for today. You know, you have to prepare for a sermon a little bit. The Hebrew people with God in the wilderness, naming Rephidim, naming the place Massa and Meribah naming the place with words that mean striving and testing God. They thirsted there and quarreled with Moses about existence. Have you brought us out here to die? There's almost a fever pitch about the kinds of food and drink we consume in our culture today, or at least an urgency. It resonates for me with the question in the story, I should say the repetitive question in the bigger story, the Exodus saga, and that is, is God among us or not? Whenever there was no water, is God among us or not? When there is no bread, is God among us or not? If there is no meat, is God among us or not? Food and drink are sacramental evidence that the Holy One of Israel who led them out of Egypt is presence. The one who delivered them can still deliver. Is God among us? Do you see us? Do you hear us? It becomes the question in the coffee shop or at the food truck and breakfast cafe, my own disappointment when my carry-out croissant was microwaved rather than toasted. We're sophisticated enough, so we don't overtly associate our demise with that croissant fixed not just right. But we don't overly associate our demise with finding the next bottle of Dasani but it piques my awareness to the reality that our food and drink are sacraments for our need for God. In the cafe and coffee shop, the other layers of those questions are, do you see me out here in this wilderness? 
Do you hear me? Am I lost to you? Do I matter to God? And the urgency comes, I think, from an underlying non-thought that if I can get this croissant just right, I might be saved. Or I might have my answer to wondering if God has abandoned and I don't matter after all. Granted, the Hebrew people, the people of God, were thirsty in a desert. Water, after all, is an essential element, a necessary ingredient to staying alive. But sometimes we place our orders like life depends on it because I think we, too, are out there wandering in the wilderness and wondering if we matter, wondering... Do you see me saying, do you hear me behind this mask? Lost and switch backing our way in a figure eight and going nowhere in a pandemic. Food and drink are put out as the particularities, as a subliminal test invented ingredients for Massa and Meribah. It's all fun. It's festive and fascinating. And yet it seems my life depends on it. An elaborate subliminal force because we can't say to God, give us water or we'll die out here because heaven knows all the kinds of water at our fingertips. We can't be so simple and elemental as to ask for, argue for water. So we lay out a masa and meribah for God. Exotic ingredients as a way to know in a brew cup. To know that I'm unique, that I'm an individual, and that I am particularly loved. Me the beloved of God. It is just that elemental. We want to know. Food and drink as sacrament for need of God. And we are all clamoring. So God told Moses, I will give them water. Get your staff and we'll do that striking thing again. Come on, I will be out ahead of you on the rock. So water it is, gushing out, so much so that the psalmist sings of it. But he said something else too. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. So if we want to know if God is among us, here's a clue for finding God. God is a rock dweller. Rocks are God made manifest. The elements of earth and wind and water bring us God. An outcropping of rock and God is present. The physical of earth and sea and sky are God's habitation. All of this brought into being for God to dwell with us. All of creation, simply a grand manifestation of God's knowing presence, God's listening, God's watchfulness, God's wandering in stages with us. Rock as place and presence of God. The seabirds this week that span the horizon without ever flapping a wing, just there riding the wind. The invisible presence of God's spirit in wind, made visible by God's body in wing. God is everywhere, all over the place. Sacrament, outward and visible, 
to assure us of the inward and spiritual. This era of young adults whose ground I worship, the way they walk the earth, this foodie generation, in this age of pandemic, when the wilderness journey is challenge at best, or endurance, stamina, and goodwill, the resources of hope and creativity down deep. We need sacrament. We need sacrament. We need to know. So yes, ashwagandha, spirulina, or vanilla oat milk latte, because God is in the elements. And all of it is platform and potential for manifestation, to find God's presence, God and creation, in the elements, the elements of earthy beets and sea salt chocolate, God to taste, to touch, smell, hear, in water gushing out from the rock or standing on the rock in front of you right there in front of you, in front of me, in my cold brew. Yes, like our life depends on it. Massa and Meribah. Name this place and live into the argument with God that you need God. Raise your holy voice like your life depends on it. I'd like a bear latte, espresso, vanilla, mocha, coconut milk. I'd like a Swiss water decaf. Some arrowroot and ashwagandha, please, because I need to know that God sees me. I need to know that God can hear me. Savory crepes, because I need to know that God is in this journey with me. Amen.